This question says, Consider a community reservoir tank in the shape and form below, made from a cylinder with a height of 19 and a hemisphere with a radius of 12. Okay, so remember that with these kinds of measurement questions, they're actually just the combination of earlier or basic shapes that we've learned about, for example, in grade 9, shapes like cylinders, cylinder... Uh, cubes, spheres, pyramids, and so on and so forth. So it is very important that you go through all of the earlier grade, like the grade nine content, and make sure you understand exactly how each of these shapes work in terms of their formulas, why we use the formulas that we do, why we sometimes have to modify the formulas and not use it exactly as they give it to us, for example. The grade nine stuff is what will give you all of that. Then when we get to the later grades, we start putting the shapes together. But if you don't have your understanding from these, then it becomes very challenging. Okay. So it says here, first question, calculate the volume. Now volume, when I think, when you see volume, I want you to think about very easy. Volume is easy. Surface area is where things can go a little bit weird and the formulas don't work or you have to sometimes modify the formula. But when it comes to volume, easy, very easy. With volume, you just find the volume of the one shape, volume of the other shape, add them together. With surface area, ah, things get a bit more weird. Okay, so what we have here is a cylinder. So let's go find, what is the volume of a cylinder? Now, sometimes they give you the volume in the question over here, but then sometimes they don't. So in this question, they have not given it to us. So in grade nine, if you've gone and watched the videos, you'll see exactly how I show you the formula for volume of a cylinder. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of that now, um, just to refresh your memory in case you haven't gone through some of those videos. So we need to understand what volume is. So let me quickly explain the difference between surface area and volume. With surface area, I want you to think about painting, okay? You know, like if you take paint, um, that is what surface area is. It is when you paint on the outside of a shape. So for example, if you had to go paint the shape, you would paint on the outside of the shape. And sometimes you would paint the bottom, sometimes you won't, depending on the type of question. With volume, I want you to think of filling up with water. So what I mean is you would take the shape and you would fill it up with water. So that would go on the inside. You would fill up all of that with water and you would fill up all of this cone part with water. So you're filling it up on the inside, whereas with surface area, you are painting on the outside. Okay, it's very important that you understand that. So when we look at volume, let's look at the cylinder. So there I've blocked off everything else. Now we can just see the cylinder. So remember volume, we're gonna think about filling it up with water. So if you were to fill this shape up with water, um, I want you to think about, you would fill it up, so, so, so the water would start filling up from the bottom here. So what shape is that? That is a circle, okay? Now that shape that I've just highlighted there, as I said, it's a circle, but so what we'll do for volume is you're gonna use the following um, formula. This formula works for all shapes, not just cylinders. It's area, of the base multiplied by the height. So what that means is we're gonna go take the area of the base, which is a circle, so that's gonna be pi radius squared because that is the area of a circle, and then you're just gonna multiply it by the height. That right there, my dear students, is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Now, can you see how easy that actually is? It's just a circle at the bottom, and then you multiply it by the height. Let me explain this multiplying by the height. So if you fill up this thing with water, so you would fill up the water at the bottom here first, and then you would just keep filling it up, so there would be another circle, and another circle, and another circle, and another circle, which would be these layers of water, and they would go all the way up to the top. And that's why we simply say multiplied by the height. So you're taking it from the bottom and then you're just dragging it up to the top as you're filling it up with water. So there, that is our cylinder that is now complete. So let's just say here, volume of cylinder. Now, of course, we'll go get all the values and everything now. Uh, let's actually go do that. So pi 
They said leave your answer as pi, so we won't change it to 3.14. Now we need the radius. Ah, oh, here's the radius. But also I did block it off, but this, num this number here was a 12. So the radius is 12 squared, and then the height is 19. So go ahead, get that. But don't round off, leave your answer with pi like they've asked us to do. And so that'll be 2736 pi, 2736 pi. Now the units would be meters cubed because it's volume. Now we're gonna go find the volume of the hemisphere part. So that's now, you can see the hemisphere at the top here, right? So the formula for a sphere, for the volume of a sphere, not a hemisphere, just a sphere, which is like a complete golf ball, like a cricket ball or a ball, okay? That is the formula four over three pi r cubed. But now we have half of a sphere, so we will half that number. So the volume of a hemisphere is going to be two over three pi r cubed, okay? So in this particular exam, they did not tell the learners that, but in some types of exam questions that you'll see um, in this playlist, they do sometimes give you the formulas. All right, so you do need to know them though, because you might get to an exam paper where they don't give that to you. Okay, so for the volume of the hemisphere, I'll do it in a different color. We said it's gonna be two over three pi r cubed, and so, that's gonna be two over three pi. Now the radius of that hemisphere is also gonna be 12 and then cubed. Now keep your answer with pi and that'll be 1152 pi meters cubed. Okay, so now with volume, it's very easy. If you fold up all of the water up to there and then for the hemisphere, you fold up the water up to there. Of course, if you just add the two values, that'll tell you the total water or the total amount of volume. And so the total volume, V total, will just be 2736 pi meters cubed plus 1152 pi. Oh, you don't have to say meters cubed. Um, and so if we add that up, we get 3888, 3888 pi meters squared. Okay, so volume is easy. Now the next one is surface area. And it's with the surface area where I see most mistakes get made because learners simply learn the formulas, but they don't realize that when you put shapes together, then the formulas cannot be used nicely with surface area. You sometimes have to make a few modifications. For example, the formula for the surface area of a cylinder, but now this is a cylinder that is by itself, is two pi r squared plus two pi r h. Now, if you just go memorize that without realizing what it is, when they give you a shape like this in the exam, you're gonna get it all wrong. Because if we look at a cylinder, it's got, I'm talking about a cylinder that's just by itself. What it has is it has a circle and another circle, a top and a bottom circle. So how many circles are there? Two. What is the formula for the area of one circle? Well, for one circle, it's, um, sorry, pi r squared. So if you have two circles, then you have two pi r squared. So this part that I've highlighted in yellow is that part over there, okay? Now, when we are talking about surface area, remember we're only talking about the outside of the shape. So I want you to imagine that this is like a Coke can, for example. Now, you only gonna look on the outside Okay, so I want you to imagine that you take a sharp knife, for example, and you were able to cut the Coke can over here, okay? And then you were able to fold it down flat on a piece of paper. Well, wouldn't you agree with me that you would end up getting a rectangle? You might just need to think about that for a bit. You take this Coke can, you cut it down the center like that. Well, not down the center, but on the, on the side. You know, like imagine I just gave you a Coke can right now and I just asked you to cut down the length of the one side. Okay, then you would fold it down and it would actually be a rectangle. And this is, this is your rectangle over here. So this part corresponds with this part or um, this part over here, right? And so that's just the height of the cylinder. So we can just put an H over there. That's the height of the cylinder. Now, this part over here is actually the distance all the way around the cylinder. 
if you think about that carefully, if you unfolded it. So what is the distance, if we're looking at it from the top, if you go all the way around, well, that is called circumference. That is the circumference. So this part here is the circumference of the circle. And we know that circumference is two pi r. Now, if you had to go work out the area of this part that we've just taken away, which we've just shown, um, which is actually just a rectangle, we know that it's gonna be this one multiplied by that one. And so that would be two pi r times h. And that's what that part is over there. So, and all of this is explained in the grade nine stuff, guys. Um, that's why I always tell grade 10 and 11 learners, like you must understand the grade nine measurement formulas and the videos that I've made where I go into this in detail. Right, and then we can also highlight this part of here. It's all on the outside there. Okay, um, so what I'm trying to say now is, oh, so you gotta be careful. In this question, they've asked us to calculate the total exter exterior surface area of the tank. Now, they said the exterior surface area. So, if you look at the shape, which part of the shape is not going to be on the exterior because it's part of a multi-shape um, object? Well, this part here, all of that, that is not going to be on the outside. That is part of the inside of the shape. And so what will happen is that we're not going to, we're going to have to modify this formula a little bit. So instead of having two circles over here, we're only going to have, whoop, can't use yellow on yellow, Kev. We're going to only have one circle. So we will take that part away and we'll have a one there. That, so, so that one pi r squared is this circle here that we still have at the bottom. And then this part here is the outside of all of that over there. So that's still okay. And so this is the modified formula that we will use for the cylinder part. Okay. Now, if we look at the hemisphere, we're going to have to make some modifications there as well. So the normal, like a standard hemisphere, if it was just a normal hemisphere, you might see a formula that just says three pi r squared, but I need to now explain how that all works. So, because we're not gonna use a three in this example, because this is only the formula when it's a hemisphere that is by itself, okay? So you see how we have to make all these modifications with surface area, but with volume, we don't have to. Volume is just easy. You take the two formulas, add them together, and Bob's your auntie, <laughs> or Bob's your uncle, whatever. It's a 21st century, it doesn't really matter anymore. So, um, a normal hemisphere, I mean, sorry, a normal sphere is um, like, a goal, like, a, like a tennis ball or a cricket ball or a golf ball. So there's a, so I just, I use that part there to try and make it look like it's three dimensional. Um, but this is a sphere. Now this is a, a sphere and the surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. So what happens is that if you had to cut this in half, right? So if you had to cut it in half, you would then take away that part over there. And so what you would then have is a dome like that. Now, a lot of learners, they say, oh, okay, well, if a sphere has a, has a surface area of four pi r squared, then won't the hemisphere just be half of that? Well, not quite. You see, it's not the same as volume. With volume, yes, you can say that, it's easy. With surface area, it's a little bit different. Let me explain. So here is a sphere, as we said, okay? And it's got this formula. Now, remember what surface area is. It's the outside of the shape. It's not the inside, it's the outside. So if we had to, um, if we had to chop this thing in half, so if you now just have this dome, you can see that we've now got this part, okay? Uh, and we cut this part away. But what about the shape that you would now have over here? What about this part? Would you agree with me that that has now become a brand new shape? There would be a circle. There's a circle at the bottom here, as we can even see over there. You see that? There's a circle under that hemisphere. And so this part over here, which is this part over here, that would be half of this number. Because if the whole way around is four pi r squared, then halfway would be two pi r squared. So this part over here is two pi r squared. 
But now we have another circle that is exposed. So you could, that, that's part of the outside of the shape. And so if that is another circle, which is pi r squared, because a circle is pi r squared, then the total surface area of a hemisphere, you would add those two things together, and you would say 2 pi r squared plus 1 pi r squared, and that would give you 3 pi r squared. But that is when you have a hemisphere by itself. So if you look at this hemisphere that we now have, you've got to ask yourself, which of these parts are not going to be part of the outside? And well done if you identified that it's this circular part that is not going to be part of the outside. So this part here is not exposed. It's part of, it's not going, you won't see that on the outside. Okay, you wouldn't be able to paint that part of the shape because it's not on the outside. So the only part that we will use for the hemisphere is not going to be 3, but it's going to be a 2. You see, this is why I really, really, really want you to understand these formulas really nicely because I promise you, in the exam, they are going to give you these formulas. They're not going to give you the modification ones, okay? You need to understand those. So we're not going to use a 3, we're going to use a 2. Now, you are more than welcome to just go work out this one, work out this one, and then add that all together. So I just want to show you one last thing before we actually go calculate now. So what we can then say is that this part over here was this part here. The blue part is um, all of this on the outside over here and over here. And obviously, if we could do 3D nicely. It would be all of this around the front and around the back. Okay, so that's what that part is. And then this part here is the dome part. It's that dome part over there. Okay, so we've captured everything that is on the outside of the shape. So yeah, I hope that that makes sense. So let's go calculate it now. Okay, so with this one, they want us to round off the answer to the nearest square meter. Okay, so for the cylinder, we're going to say pi, or you could say 1 pi if you want to, 1 pi. Now, the radius of that is 12 squared plus 2 pi. Now, the radius is 12 again, and the height is 19. If you go work this out, you get... I'm going to keep my answer with pi for now. So... 600 pi. Now, I'm just going to leave it as pi for now. It's the most accurate like that, 600 pi. Okay, now we can go do the hemisphere, which is going to be 2 times um, pi times the radius, which is also 12 to the power of 2. And if we work this out, we end up with 288 pi. Okay, and so now uh, we should actually say uh, meters squared and meters squared because it's area. And so now if we go add these together, we could say that the um, surface area total will be 600 pi plus 2, where did I write it, 8, 8 pi. And that's going to give us 2789.73 meters squared. But now they said round it to the nearest square meter. So the nearest one would be 27. 90 meters squared, 2790 meters squared.